Groton's history includes a world-renowned patriot. Stay tuned as we take a look at the story of Mother Bailey on this week's edition of Welcome to Groton. Welcome to Groton. Today we have with us Groton Town Historian Jim Streeter. Welcome. Thank you, Cindy. And we're going to talk about Mother Bailey. We are. Great. So Groton has rich um, history of famous people. Can you tell us about Mother Bailey and what makes her one of those famous people? Sure. But before I get to that, Cindy, I, I just want to uh, let the audience know that uh, when you're doing research on, on activities and people that go back to the 1700s and the early 1800s, th there's a lot of disparity in the information that's provided. Oh, yeah. uh, it might be because of the absence of media. There was really no <laughs> media back then. Uh, the timeliness as far as documenting what took place. And uh, then of course you have impersonal interpretations. Of course. Uh, and it's a proverbial as time goes by, the interpretation changes. So the information that, that I provide to you today, uh, there are conflicting stories, okay. but uh, I tried to gear it so we, we, to the best we can right. uh, as far as exactly what happened. So, Great. But I, I wanted to let you know you that. Thank you for clarifying that. But when we talk about Mother Bailey, I guess you, you should start, I should start off with a, a short bio about her. Okay. Uh, her actual name was Anna, also known as Nancy Warner. Oh. That was her birth name and uh, uh, her parents were Philip and Hannah Warner and unfortunately they died when she was 10 years old, both oh. of them. Uh, the mother died of smallpox and the father who was a, 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 a sailor went out to sea shortly after the burial of, of his wife oh. and unfortunately 10 days later he also died of smallpox. Oh. So after that uh, the, uh, the grandmother, uh, Mrs. Mills, mm -hmm. uh, grandmother Mills as I'll call her, uh, took her under, uh, under her wing, uh -huh. and uh, she, had, uh, she had two sons, also Edward and James uh, Mills. And they ran a, a, a small farm. Uh, Edward was a tenant farmer for the, for the family. Uh, but Mother uh, Bailey, as we'll call her, okay. that's, uh, that's the easiest way to remember her name, uh, she and her older brother, who was two years older, went to the farm. Uh, Mother Bailey had to take on the responsibilities, although she was, uh, very again, young. very young. She took on the responsibilities of a, a farmer's daughter. Uh, oh, she yeah. would uh, milk cows, uh, uh, shear sheep. Wow. Uh, she would also uh, raise vegetables, uh, take care of the horses, and, mm -hmm. and things like this. Uh, while she was a farmer at the thing, uh, we believe that Edward adopted her. Oh. But she also uh, fell in love with a young man uh -oh. named uh, Elijah Bailey. Mm. Um, he was uh, a young farmer also at the time. Okay. Uh, he, he, Elijah Bailey, had joined the garrison for the fort uh, as, a, as a soldier uh, because the Revolutionary War was, was gearing up and coming to Groton, so he, he had joined there. On September 6, of uh, 1781, okay. the Battle of Fort Grizzle took place. And the signal was two shots, two cannon shots. And all the farmers who were part of the garrison would respond to the fort. Uh, unfortunately, we had a traitor, Ar uh, Benedict Arnold, oh. who knew the signal, so they fired a third shot, which meant everything's fine. Uh. But Edward ignored it, and he responded to the fort. Thereafter, the battle took place, uh, and uh, uh, Mother Bailey stayed at home the rest of the day. They could hear the gunshots. Uh, they could see the smoke from the fort. Uh, they lived 
the farm was actually located at what they called Candlewood Hill, okay. also known as Skunk Lane, <laughs> and it was in Pleasant Valley. So it, it, was, it was between three and six miles away from the fort, but they could see the smoke from the fort. Right. And the battle didn't last long. The battle lasted about 40 minutes. Oh. Uh, but the rest of the day, they all waited for, for people to come home, and, and they, they didn't see anything. But they also observed a lot of other smoke because the British had won the battle and they burned New London and Groton. Mm. Okay. So after she completed her chores that day, she responded, to, about sunset, she responded to the fort. She went to the fort, she couldn't find her uncle, but she saw the carnage that was there. Uh, the British actually massacred uh, many, many soldiers, American soldiers there. Some of the soldiers, were, uh, the wounded, were taken to the uh, 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 well, we call it the, the Avery House, uh, Ebenezer Avery House. Mm -hmm. It's now at the Ford. It used to be on uh, Thames Street uh, and, and Latham Street. She went there and she did find her uncle, and he was he was he was mortally Pretty. wounded. He was he was uh, on his deathbed. Oh. Uh, she tended to him, and incidentally, uh, Edward's wife had given birth that day. Oh my! So Mother Bailey explained to her uncle that you know that the wife had given birth. And his last request was, could you bring my children and my wife here? Aww. So Mother Bailey left after tending to his wounds, mm -hmm. walked back, saddled up the horse, put the mother, wow. uh, Edward's that. wife, on the horse uh, with one of his children. Mm -hmm. And then she carried the baby, and they returned to the Avery house. And uh, they, they placed the baby on, on the father's chest. And he subsequently died, all right, but he, he did fulfill his last request. So uh, then she, she had to return to the farm and, and complete the rest of her duties. So that, that was her indoctrination as far as the, the battle at Fort Grizzle was concerned. Right. Wow, what a young, phenomenal young Mother Bailey. Absolutely. Wow. Um, how did the, Gra the Battle of Groton Heights have a lasting effect on her? Well, she had a lot of lasting effects uh, as a result of what she saw. Uh, not only she, a deep hatred for the British. Well, yeah. Uh, not only because of the carnage that she saw at the fort, but the, the dying soldiers that she tended to, uh, as well mm -hmm. as her uncle, uh, at the uh, Avery House. Mm -hmm. And she also subsequently learned that her boyfriend had been taken prisoner. Oh, wow. All right? Uh, from, the, from the fort. And then... Uh, as a result of the death of Edward, she now became very responsible for taking care of, of the farm. Right, lead hand there. Um, where did she live? Where did the Baileys reside? Well, I, after she, you know, coming along, her actual house is on Thames Street okay. at the corner of Broad Street over in the borough or the city of Groton. Okay. Uh, she moved there after she married this Elijah Bailey. Oh. Right. Okay, good to know. Um, can you tell us more about Elijah? Like, I can. I know we, I know we touched on him. Though. Good I can. I, I think it's I a mentioned. Good story. Uh, <laughs> by the way, when when uh, when she responded to the fort when the battle took place, she was just 21 years old. Oh. Now remember, quite young. Uh, she had her boyfriend Elijah Bailey, who actually, they, in some of the readings. She was engaged to him. Okay. Uh, he was 17 years old oh. at the time, so kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, he was, uh, as a result of the war, taken prisoner of war. Right. Uh, there were 28 prisoners of war. Uh, they were put on a prison ship and taken to New York, uh, where they remained on this prison ship for three or four months. Uh, after, after he returned, uh, and Mother Bailey felt that uh, Edward's wife was capable of handling the farm and, and, and you know, the things would uh, take care of themselves. Uh, they got married, right. all right? And that was in 1783, I believe. Okay. Um, and at the time, he was a seafarer. He would go out to sea and stuff. Uh, then in 1800, uh, Mother Bailey and Eliza Bailey yep. opened a tavern. A tavern? Right. Now, it's a different connotation than we think of a tavern today. Okay. A tavern today, we'd say, well, we're going to go in and have a cold beer or right. uh, maybe a, a, 
a, a strong drink or something like this. They were more or less like uh, a bed and breakfast. Uh, they had a lot of travelers and it, you know, you're traveling by horse and buggy and uh, so if you're going a long distance, you needed a place to stay, a place to eat. So it was like a bed and breakfast. Okay. However, Mother Baylor was, was quite, the, quite the woman. She was very jolly and uh, she danced and That's sang. Cool. And yeah. So people enjoyed going there. Uh, and then in 1808, Elijah was appointed as the first postmaster for Groton. Really? And the Mother Bailey house on Thames Street became the first post office for Groton. Really? Yeah. And uh, people would pick up their mail there. Uh, and actually, he served 40 years as the postmaster in, until he died. Is that post? And then after he died, uh, he died in uh, 1848, uh -huh. right, Mother Bailey became the postmistress for about a month. And she took care of the, the post. Uh, I'm sure that duties. was rare back then. Yes. Quite rare? Yes. Awesome. She sounds amazing and fascinating. Um, we want to hear more, but we've got to take a quick break. Um, stay tuned, we'll be right back with more about Mother Bailey with town historian Jim Streeter. Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. My name is Harvey Lauer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom pat me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really like cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind pizza. wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another hope bad I don't day. I really have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. We believe that when the community comes together, we can do great things. We're working to make Groton the healthiest and safest place for everyone. Hey kids, listen to your parents. We want you to have the facts and the best tools to keep you safe. We know there is a lot of confusing talk about drugs in the media. Parents, we know you have a tough job to do teaching your kids about alcohol and drug abuse. We're here to help you. Let's work together to change community norms about drugs and alcohol. Help us out. Volunteer. Donate. Find us at Groton Prevents and join us. Welcome back to Welcome to Groton, and we have with us Jim Streeter. So um, we're talking about Mother Bailey. Can you finish telling me more? Where was this post office? That the post she office became? was actually in her house, but in her house. <laughs> but don't think of it as a post office today. Okay. It was actually a desk, oh. and the desk is at the Monument House uh, at Fort Grizzle right now. So if people wanted to look at it. Um, we've also come across that there's a wooden mailbox. Uh, from that post office. Is that a museum up in Norwich? And we're trying to obtain that to, okay. to put in the museum. Awesome. Um, now we said in the opening that you know she was nationally known. Um, how did she become nationally known? Well, we mentioned her hatred toward the British yes. well, in the uh, War of 1812 uh, with the British again. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1813, there was a possibility that they were again going to invade Groton. Oh. Uh, ships were seen offshore. So the, the, the warning went out and people responded to the fort, at a garrison of, of people. The, the families, the, the wives and children, they all left because of the carnage of the that war. took place to, oh. in the previous encounter with the British, uh, plus the burning of the houses. So they left. However, the garrison discovered that they were short on wadding, which was needed for, for shooting cannons. Right. So they sent, in fact, it happened to be one of Mother Bailey's uh, neighbors, to the town, to, to, the, uh, to the village, to find more wadding, uh, specifically flannel. Okay. Uh, well, Mother Bailey got approached and uh, she helped. She went to, to other uh, houses and because everything was gone pretty much. Right. But they did find some children's uh, uh, clothing, scarves, and things like this, and they used that. Uh, but it certainly wasn't enough, and, and uh, her neighbors said, This isn't enough. So, yeah. the conflicting stories, but 
Supposedly, she stood in the street on Thames Street and undid her petticoat, took it off on the street, and handed it Whoa. to the soldier. Uh, That's quite a story the soldier back then. Brought it, the soldier <laughs> brought it back to the fort and told the story of her doing this in the street, and they were so impressed with this, Aww. and uh, they, didn't, they didn't use it. They actually put it on a pike, and, on a stake, and held it as a victory flag, of sort, or an honor flag uh, for Mother Bailey. So well, that story that. reverberated. Well, fortunately, the war didn't pl take place. The, the British left. Okay. Uh, but the story uh, went throughout the country. Uh, That's awesome. Of, uh, and she was considered a heroine because well, of that. Well, obviously. Um, is, when did she get the name Mother Bailey? Like, when did that happen? Well, there's, there's several p possible reasons. Okay. There's, there's nothing in print that says why they called her. Uh, but some say it's because of the act that she did take off her petticoat that Mother she called Lee. her Mother Bailey. Uh, there's also because she was such a kind neighbor and she took care of those uh, that were less, that were needy and, mm -hmm. and less fortunate. She would, she would help them. Right. And also, uh, she loved children, even though she didn't have any children herself. She would go down the street and provide cookies to the children on the street. Aww, yeah. what a sweet soul. Yeah. Um, now we know she was nationally known, but how famous did she become? Well, as a result of, of the, uh, the Petticoat Act, right. she received many letters and communications, but a lot of famous people stopped by to, to thank her and oh, really? to talk to her. Included in that was uh, General Lafayette. Really? And then we had uh, uh, President uh, Monroe. Nice. Uh, President Jackson. Uh, President uh, Van Buren. And then a Colonel, Colonel Richard Johnson, uh, who ultimately became Vice President of the United States. They all visited her. That's very impressive. Uh, at one time after her death, uh, a colonel from uh, the governor's foot guard, uh -huh. they had an annual camp and they named that camp after her uh, because of that. And then and, uh, she was still alive. Shortly after the, the, uh, the petticoat incident, mm -hmm. they held a special military ball in her honor in oh. London. So oh, she became wonderful. quite, quite famous. So and another funny. thing, even more recently, coming, bringing up to date, uh -huh. uh, in, in year 2001, President George Bush, uh, during the Women's History Month, uh, signed a, proclama a proclamation uh, honoring her and another woman for their patriotic activities during that's the Revolutionary fantastic. War. That's yeah. ah, That's really cool. Um, now, obviously, she was famous. She was nationally known. But, uh, she, like, did she ever, you mentioned a lot of the presidents, was she ever gifted anything from them? Yes, uh, one, of the, one of the more prominent gifts that she received, she received from President Jackson. Oh. And he provided her a wrought iron fence that is still in existence today around her house. Oh. Uh, other gifts, in, as small as you may think, okay. uh, she wanted keepsakes from, from her visitors. Mm, yeah. So she, uh, she took locks of hair that were provided to her she by did. the different presidents. And uh, there's one or two of those that still exist and they're, they're in the Monument House also. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, now, how politically active was she? She sounds pretty awesome and... I familiar. smile about that because I've read a lot about her and she was a very, very, very staunch Democrat. Okay. And uh, anti-Whig uh, really? uh, party. The Whigs were paramount to the uh, Republican uh, Party today. And to give you an example, uh, she would, had maintained uh, lithographs or photographs or pictures of her favorite presidents. She mm -hmm. would have them hanging in, in her living room. Okay. All right? And the ones that she disliked, uh -huh. uh, she hung them upside down oh. uh, in the woodshed in the back. <laughs> now, I say woodshed, but I, I was thinking of another type of shed yeah. uh, that po probably existed Perhaps. back then. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh my. Well, I guess she had her beliefs. Yes. <laughs> um, besides um, all these awesome things, with her, all her heroic gestures and whatnot, did she ever get any endorsements? <laughs> I, again, I'm smiling about that because I've done the research on it. Uh -huh. uh, when we were growing up, uh, my children were growing up, or, uh, and the baby started teething, mm -hmm. uh, used a, a product called Paragoric, and you put this on their gums, yeah. and it would stop them from when their teeth were coming in from crying and, right. and things of this Numb nature. Numb them a little, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, she was, was an endorsement for a product called Mother Bailey's 
quieting syrup. Quieting syrup. Uh, and okay. it was also used for children's teething, but it was also used for uh, you had stomach flu or you had diarrhea or things of wow. this nature. It was a, a fix-all. It sounds like it. Uh, what was it made of? Uh, the name of it, again, Mother Bailey's Quieting Syrup, and incidentally, I have a bottle here oh, of the original awesome. bottle uh, that that syrup came in. That's so cool. Uh, but the problem with it, it was actually the, 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 the materials inside of it uh -huh. uh, was made of opium and alcohol. Oh, my. It was uh, what they call a uh, lanonum wow. uh, thing. And ultimately, I discovered in some of the write-ups that they actually called it the baby killer because oh. it was very toxic. Oh, my. Uh, okay. So she, she, her name was on that uh, for quite a while. And uh, it okay. was famous. It was uh, throughout the country. That's incredible. I love it. Um, now, because she was so involved with everything, was she a member of the Groton Daughters of um, American Revolution? Uh, no. And, oh. and the reason why, everybody thinks that. Uh, she died in 1851, Mother uh -huh. Bailey did. The Groton Stonington uh, DAR group uh, did not organize until 1893. Oh, okay. So she was not part of it. However, in her honor, uh, that chapter was named after her, so it's the Anna Warner Bailey chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, you mentioned when she passed away. How did she pass away? I hope it wasn't with this. No, it wasn't because of the <laughs> concoction. Um, she was actually 92 years old when she passed away, and she was uh, at home uh, wow. sitting in front of the fireplace, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, again, conflicting stories, but. Uh, her clothing caught on fire, and uh, oh. she met her death uh, through a fire. Oh, right. how sad. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sad to hear that. <laughs> um, I can't believe she lived to be 92, though. That's amazing. Is that house that she resided in on the National Registry? Uh, it is. Uh, uh, Groton Bank, as they call it, uh, the area between Broad Street and Thames Street, or uh, Allen Street on, uh, off of Thames Street, uh, was placed on, the houses were placed on the National Register in a group. Oh, okay. Right? But it's not specific on its own listed in the register, but it is on the National Register in, in a group for the Groton uh, Bank. Okay, but the house for 150 years, for the past 150 years is still intact? The house is, uh, I, I did awesome. research on it, and the best I can determine, there were probably 11 or 12 different owners. Oh. And uh, in 2010, uh, the city of Groton purchased the house. Okay. And uh, it's pretty recent. They were trying to preserve it. Mm -hmm. They spent some money on it, uh, stabilizing it, <clears throat> and it, it was quite costly. And now they've decided that they, they might want to present it to a group that would be capable of taking care of it. Oh, okay. So the Daughters of the American Re uh, Revolution, that Anna yep. Warner Bailey chapter, uh, has approached the city to possibly acquire the house. Uh, they're in the process now of presenting uh, uh, what type of work they, they plan to do in the house and also presenting a financial plan uh, to show that they are capable of doing that. So we're in the process of doing that. Uh, okay. And I hope that they do because it, it certainly needs, to, needs yeah. to be saved. The historical significance of that house yeah. is, is, is tremendous and, and we should save that Definitely. house. Definitely, I agree. Um, if someone wants to find out more about Mother Bailey and the Mother Bailey House, um, are there any websites or historic guy groups that they can check out? There are. Uh, if you go on the internet, uh -huh. I, I won't read the internet uh, okay. thing, but uh, I'm sure that we'll, we'll, we'll apply, provide them on the <laughs> screen. But if you go on the internet and you, you check out the Anna Warner Bailey House, okay. Significant information will come up on that, along with contact information. Okay. And then the Anna Warner DAR, the Daughters Those of the American Revolution. If you check those out, uh, I know the, the Anna Warner Bailey House group, that's the Friends of the, uh, of the Anna House. Warner Bailey House yeah. Association. And uh, you can join, uh, they have membership and, and take all the help we can as okay. far as. I like it. Huh. She's so fascinating. It is. Um, I kind of want you to make a mini movie out of her. Um, <laughs> but Jim, thank you so much. I'm sorry we've run out of time again. But thank you so much for being a welcome to Groton and talking about Mother Bailey. And of course, I look forward to another show with you. So thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.
Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Groton, and we'll see you next time.